Welcome along to part two of my 150 euro paint job on this Mark III slash four Volkswagen Golf Cabriolet. In the last episode, you will have seen me stripping the car back and getting all of the parts removed from it and rubbing it down and getting it all masked up and addressing a couple of little areas of concern and getting the bodywork straightened out before we give it a paint job. So now it's the point where we can actually paint it. So I'm really excited for this. I think it's going to look great when I'm finished. I tried a little tester piece on the fuel filler cap, which I'm not showing you, by the way, because uh, I, uh, I want it to be a bit of a surprise when I get to paint it. But, uh, although I'll probably show you in the thumbnail. But anyway, you'll see. Uh, you'll see how it's all going to shape up. And so will I, to be honest with you, because this is real time. And I have never done this before. So let's see how we progress. So I'm going to start the process on the front bumper here because uh, it's obviously removed from the car and it's a good starting point and it's kind of a complex shape. So we can get that out of the way, get the first coat of paint onto it. But first of all, what we need to do is we need to give it a wipe down with some panel wipe and a tack cloth. And there's also a little black kind of a... Uh, chin spoiler I suppose type of thing that uh, needs to be masked off as well just uh, to make sure that we don't have any uh, kind of uh, nasty bits uh, I, I want it to look right you know so let's get that masked off as well I find this blue uh, scotch masking tape is actually really good stuff um, masking tape varies in quality hugely I tend to find from the very good to the absolutely piss poor Stuff that doesn't stick to itself, whatever about uh, to a panel. And that's really not what you need when you're trying to do a job like this. So, I would suggest when you, when you are going for a roll of mask and tape, go and buy the 3M stuff or the Scotch stuff or whatever. Get the branded one. Don't buy the cheapy crap because it just doesn't pay. Okay, so this stuff here is panel wipe. and Basically, it's a kind of a light solvent. Just used for removing any impurities and waxes, oils, greases, or anything that's not going to let the paint stick very well. It gives it a good base for painting on. Now, I'm using Blue Roll to wipe it down. I know some people probably wouldn't uh, recommend that, but to be honest with you, as far as I'm concerned, I know it's clean, so that's my thinking on it. Now, okay, Oop. so that's that uh, all wiped down there now, so just check it over one last time. You're probably thinking to yourself, this guy's absolutely insane. Here he is mixing paint with a piece of electrical cable in a coffee jar, and he's about to apply it to his car. And you know what, you're probably right, but stay with me. Let's see how we get on. So now, here's the moment of truth, folks. You're about to find out what colour this car is going to be. Look at this. There's red, and then there's this red. I'm going to give it a, a stir with an L curtain pole. Because reasons. Give it a good stir. Now, ordinarily, I do not like painting. I hate painting houses, but this has proven to be actually, oh Jesus, actually quite satisfying, to tell you the truth. Now, this paint is very, very viscous. And goes all over the bleeding place, which is why we're about to dilute it with white spirits, or mineral spirits, or whatever way you want to call it. So now we're going to go with two-thirds paint to maybe one-third white spirit. And we're going to mix that up and we're going to see how we're looking. Now don't be tempted to put the lid in the jar and shake it because what will happen is you'll aerate it and uh, you're causing problems for yourself. That seems to be about the right consistency. What we're looking for, apparently, is... Uh, now, this is from other YouTube videos I've watched. You, <laughs> you're looking for... When you take this out, it, it takes three seconds for it to go from a run to drip. So, one, two, three. That's good enough. We'll go with that. Okay, so... I'm not going to pour all of this into the... 
into the uh, paint tray I'm just going to pour a little bit in and then we put the lid back on the jar there we go I think that'll probably be enough to get us started and where did I leave the lid for the jars next thing there it is all right so last thing I want to do aside from putting my camera on charge actually I notice is to put uh, is to give the bumper a rub down with the tack cloth now I have actually gone over the rest of the car with the panel wipe as well so that's actually all done now so what we can do is we'll actually be able to progress things if, if I find that uh, the going is good and we can actually get stuck into the rest of the car then that's what we're going to do I can tell you now I've never, never used a tack cloth in my life before so I'm not really sure what to expect to tell you the truth Which is exactly what I thought it was, a sticky cloth. Sticky cloth, reminds me of my teens. Yeah, it's picking up little bits and pieces of junk off the paint. All right, it is the moment of tr truth, folks. So we get the roller loaded up. Now, a piece of advice I actually saw in one of the videos was to use a hairdryer to pop the bubbles as we go. So I'm actually gonna get the hairdryer set up. Every garage, is it, no garage is complete without having a hairdryer in it, folks. Now you keep it on cold, so. Let's see how that goes. Hair dryer's wonky, but sure anyway. That's that's the reason why it ended up in the garage. So right now, let's have a look and see. Oh, the hair dryer works a treat, actually. Coverage is very good at this paint, I have to say. But don't forget, folks, this is only the first coat. Now, I'm going to see how I go without the hairdryer for the moment. It's just awkward, to be honest, with you having to hold it while I'm doing this. Now my experience here at this moment in time is that it's it's important to make sure that the roller actually spins and doesn't slide on the the paint. I suppose it depends on how much pressure you're putting on it. Right, we need to top up our paint tray. I'm using this little sponge that I've actually cut up here. So I'm gonna just get a bit of paint onto this. And I'm gonna just dab it in there. Hopefully that'll do the job. And it does. Hey mister. Oh good, that's a nice treat. Is it? It is. Oh. Just don't touch it now, it's wet, okay? You know the paint is wet, so just de definitely do you not touch what? it. You know what? What? That's good, you got the paint. Yeah, That's I did. That's the light. That's the good paint. It is. I like the color. Right? Yeah. You didn't touch it, did you? No. <laughs> Just be careful. I don't. No, it's all right. It's all right. Just be careful, you know okay? I'm going to paint the whole car first. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint the whole car. The silver? No. No, neither do I. I don't like silver either. That's not my favourite colour. No, silver I think is boring, isn't it? No. Alright, so there is the first coat put onto the bumper and I am really, really happy with that colour, I have to say. It looks fantastic. The whole car is going to look brilliant now if, uh, <laughs> if this is just the bumper. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's keep going. Let's get the let's get the bonnet done as well now and we'll see how we're uh, see how we're looking. I might even do the wings as well.
All right, I've already gone over the bonnet with the tack cloth, so let's uh, let's get stuck in with this then. It's a really good quality paint, I have to say. That's the thing. You wouldn't want to be doing this job before quality paint. It want to be for pricey, to be fair. It's not not the cheapest either. I think I paid sixty four euro for the two and a half liters of it, so. You know, <laughs> that's that's pricey enough, really. Now, apparently, the bubbles will just level out of it, so, and I think it's already starting to happen. Yeah, the bubbles aren't coming out of it. There is, it looks like there's loads there, though. There are actually loads, but if you look where I did in the middle here, they're all actually just starting to, to settle out. So, yeah, that looks the absolute business. Really happy with that colour now. I really, really am. Brilliant. Now, we're going to have to wait until tomorrow before we flat this back, and then when we do flat it back, then we'll be able to give another coat. Of course a fly landed in the damn thing. You silly sod. Go away. It was never there. Like any of these jobs, folks, it's the prep work that takes the key, or the, it's the prep work that takes the time, I should say. Prep work is key. Now, at a later point in the process, I'm going to kind of do things like open the doors and do inside the doors and all that kind of stuff as best as possible. But for the moment, I want to try and get the exterior of it done. water inside the epoxy aerial tube. I hope that's not going to be a head wrecker. Right, I should have left that alone. Anyway. Okay, so we have most of this side of the car painted there now. I just uh, progressed things a little bit. And I have to say, it's really starting to take shape. Now, look, you know, I mean, it is the first coat, so you're, you're going to see a few surface imperfections and kind of parts where it's not covering fully and all that as well. That's why I'm saying it's going to take, you know, uh, four coats or so. So uh, we're going to keep going on it. But uh, what I want to do is I want to get the first coat laid down today, and then we can uh, we can kind of um, wait until tomorrow and then get start getting it rubbed back and see how we're looking. But you can see there now on the bonnet, the bubbles and everything that were in it are all uh, are all gone out of it and even with the orange peel and everything like that there's a lovely shine to that okay folks we are now on the following day and one haircut later and it is now time to get the car rubbed down now you'll see i've actually got most of it done already and i'm going to walk you through what i've done and i have another little another little area that i can cover over the far side there just to show you what it was i was actually doing but um, there were a few areas of concern and that as well that we needed to address. Now, the first thing to point out is there's, uh, the first the part one of this video about this uh, this whole process is already up on YouTube, and I feel like I should probably explain my motives behind actually roller painting this car. As I explained, I am actually going to be selling the car now. It looked ropey as hell, and if I were to try and get it resprayed, that would overcapitalize, and there'd be no way I'd ever make the money back on it. Okay. And I could try and sell it while it was ropey looking and a lot of people would be turned off by that as well. Whereas if the car looks passable, then it will turn more heads and get a little bit of attention. And the hope there is that people will understand the fact that, okay, yes, it has been roller painted, but it looks decent. 
and they can get it resprayed themselves at their leisure further down the line if that's what they choose or they can live with it the way it is so they have a choice in that matter if i'd left it the way it was they didn't really have a choice because the bodywork looked terrible i mean they had they would have had to do something with it so you know i mean that's that's kind of my thinking there the other factor is um personal cost as well i don't want to be spending the money on a, on this car you know it's not a car that i'm particularly attached to i bought it to, to flip and uh, lastly the complexities of spray painting far outweigh the complexities of roller painting plus the hassle of you know the, the mess it would have made in my garage i just can't be dealing with it i also don't have a lot of the equipment i need and everything as well i don't think my compressor would be able to keep up with the uh, spray gun probably would but i don't want to have to get down that uh, that rabbit hole to be honest with you so this was the simplest option for me made more, made much more sense as far as i'm concerned so let me just show you now where we're at okay so this is the driver the passenger side door here and you can see obviously the paint is dry but it hasn't been flatted back yet it looks reasonably shiny to a certain to a certain degree but um there's a lot of orange peel in it it's a lot of unevenness and if you run your hand over it there's a, a lot of surface imperfections and things like that so that's why we're flattening it out so this is where we're at now okay so running my hand along this it feels smooth so those surface imperfections are gone even though the paint now looks dull but that's the next uh that the next step is to get another coat of paint on that so that's the basic uh premise behind that so what i've been doing is i have been wet sanding it with 400 grit uh wet and dry and uh, that has been uh, doing the job nicely there have been a couple of little areas where i've needed to go back on uh here for example on the bonnet uh that there was there was a small kind of depression in the paint so to be honest with you i had to do something about it so what i did was i actually rubbed it back filled it and rubbed it back again and um just the slightest little skim of filler there really you know i mean it's almost transparent so but it's there nonetheless and same situation here and they're now rubbed flat and they should uh, they should come good with a couple of coats of paint and uh, that'll see it right and then last last one here is here as well so there's only those three areas really the rest of the car is actually grand so yeah i'll uh we'll let, let's get on to the uh, passenger door and start getting that rubs down and we'll uh i'll show you my method you can uh take it or leave it to be honest which i'm not necessarily saying my method is the right method but it's my method all right so this is the uh my bucket of water for the sandpaper and we have our 400 wet and dry here as well and a uh, sanding pad so um and put a new piece of paper on this stretch it across it huge amount of these uh, these bits and pieces i got for doing this i actually bought in um in aldi in actual fact so it was uh it was very cost effective the only thing about it is the packs of uh sandpaper i got uh they've all sorts of different grades and they've only got like two sheets of 400 grit and that's the one i need the most of so i'll have to go and buy a few packs of 400 grit not the greatest amount of hardship in the world but it just it, it was a mild annoyance so uh anyway right so i'm going to rub this door back now with the flat sander here okay and then we will uh, go over some of the kind of contour areas with uh, the piece of paper in my hand uh, just to kind of get in at the crevices but we're not going to go too mad on that so um, yeah get the paper nice and wet and and basically we're looking to remove say 50% of the orange peel and get get the surface nice and flat at this point of the game I'm not too concerned if I get back through to the uh, silver paint below a little bit in places because, as I said, it's only the first coat, the primer, if you like. Now, I think some people like to use like uh, something in the water to sort of lubricate it a little bit. I'm not doing that. It's literally just water. Um, so I suppose what you could do is, I don't know. I mean, I don't even. I can't even recommend anything to tell you the truth to do it with. I mean, maybe you say washing up liquid, but I don't subscribe to the theory that that'd be such a great idea. But uh, yeah, as I said, I'm by no means an expert. You see, there's some imperfections there, which I'm just going a little bit heavier on, just to try and 
remove them. Now, what I will say as well is this has been a bit of a learning experience, this first coat, on how the paint actually goes on. So the second coat should be a little bit more straightforward because I kind of now know what the consistency of the paint is and what to expect and things to do and things not to do. So uh, there were a few runs and stuff like that in this, which I now know how to avoid to a certain degree. So, uh, you know, if I was expecting to paint the car with only one coat of paint, I'd be delusional but i knew that wasn't going to be the case so well, that's that's coming good now and as i said what we'll do is we'll go over that now with the uh, piece of paper in my hand as well Make sure to keep the paper wet. I'm also, I'm not too concerned about these areas in here because like the trim is gonna be going on top of that. So, you know i mean it doesn't really matter if there's orange peel and stuff in there you're not going to see it so things like that where there's going to be trim hiding it or whatever it'll be grand as far as i'm concerned i'm only just doing the kind of the the outer visible part of the panels now what i'm going to do lastly now is i'm going to wipe this down with some uh, just some blue roll and take the water off it and then I'm going to have a look and see if there's any uh, shiny spots, basically bits I've missed. So uh, it shouldn't be shiny anywhere. It should all be kind of uh, flat, kind of matte coloured. And uh, if it is all matte coloured and all of the kind of orange peel is gone, there's no surface imperfections, then we're good to go. And then what we can do is we can move on to getting the car wiped down with mineral spirits or white spirits and get it all, uh, get it all prepped for, for the next coat of paint. And I have the paint mixed as well. You can see the amount of uh, paint that came off there like so that's to be expected folks i mean this is what we're this is what we're working towards get a uh, get all the rubbish off the top surface of the paint and that's what's going to eventually give us our shine and our a uh, nice even coat but uh if there's any uh if there are any kind of surface imperfections to kind of go deeper then the paint, if you know what I mean, well, you're going to have to address them. You're going to either have to rub it back and start again, or you're going to have to, well, rub it back and fill it or something like that, like I did on the bonnet. So you can expect that, that may well be the case because the first coat of paint may well show up issues that you wouldn't have necessarily seen before that point. Now, there's a couple of runs there. So I'm going to try and rub them back. What I can maybe do is go for a slightly coarser, uh, grade of paper there on that just to just to get out the runs now, things can be visible but just because they're visible doesn't necessarily mean that they're a problem i mean if you can't if you can see them but you can't feel them then as far as i'd be concerned they're not really a problem like those runs there for example now okay fair enough we're going back to the silver at that point but you know what i'm gonna be painting it again so doesn't really matter a huge amount. Obviously you don't want to be rubbing all the paint off, but. Okay, so white spirits on a cloth. Wipe it down. Now it goes without saying folks that you need to have a fairly warm environment to be doing this in. This garage was Baltic when I came into it earlier on but uh, I fortunately have a space heater. Uh, it's too loud to leave on when I'm filming. It sounds like a jet engine to be honest with you. But it's uh, the, the garage is sufficiently warm now. Okay folks, coat number two is about to go on.
Okay, I'm not concerned about the bubbles. They're going to pop out of, uh, of the paint of their own accord. So I'll just leave them be. So this paint does seem to go on very bubbly. I think it's just particularly when it's mixed with the, with the mineral spirits. But in any case, I'm not concerned. But the coverage is an awful lot better this time around now anyway. thing I'm finding actually on this coat that I uh, kind of didn't realize on the first coat is it's definitely a, a benefit to go over the panel twice so once kind of with the uh, with the roller with, with as much paint on it as you're going to need and then the second time around you need to kind of um, uh, have the roller fairly dry not completely obviously but fairly dry and go over it again and what that'll do is it'll even it out and it'll take out any potential runs as well and um, yeah, it just uh, gives a much better finish actually I'm finding. So that could be something worth trying actually if you're doing this yourself. Okay, coat number two has been fully applied and that ladies and gentlemen will do us for tonight because it is really starting to look good actually, I have to say. I'm actually surprising myself here. I'm gonna just take you for a little bit of a walk around. Now, as I said, this car is gonna be getting four coats. So this being coat number two, there's still gonna be a few imperfections showing through and stuff like that but we're starting to get much closer towards uh, a decent level of coverage. And I have to say, this color is absolutely amazing. It is better even in the metal than, uh, than I think it's showing up on the camera. And uh, yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled with it. So uh, yeah, I mean, talk about transformative. Like when you consider the way that, uh, that wing and door was when I bought the car like the wing was the, the, it had a very very sketchy looking uh, rattle can paint job done on it the paint was all peeling and blistering with corrosion starting to show through underneath and then there was a uh, down on this side down here there was a dent now I mean look at it it's not absolutely perfect uh, but it is a hell of a lot better and um, I think uh, I think this is definitely uh, a case of the end justifying the means so uh, we'll pick this up the next time I get the chance to come out and uh, give it another flat back and another coat. Coat number three, by the way, is going to be a situation where I'm not, or, well, when I'm flattened back before coat number three, I'm not going to be trying to get down as deep. It'll be literally just a case of kind of taking down some of the orange peel and then uh, laying down another coat. And um, yeah, it'll, uh, it'll really uh, transform things. Okay, folks, so I spared you a little bit of the detail here, but we are now ready for coat number three. Coat number two is dried, flatted back, and tack cloth has been run over it and everything as well. And uh, you can see there's a lot more coverage here. So obviously we're, you know, we're, we're making good progress, but there's still a long way to go. But what I did was I flatted it back with 400 grit in this instance. Again, uh, took care of any other little minor imperfections, and we're getting the better of those. But there's... Uh, still a few little uh, bits and pieces that uh, definitely need covering up so we'll be uh, hopefully seeing a big change now after the third coat is dry the other thing i noticed actually is the second coat was quite coarse after it dried now i do uh, i do wonder is that down to the fact that i forgot to run the tack cloth over uh, over the, the paint after the first coat like I did flat back and I wiped it down with the mineral spirits and all that but what I didn't do is uh, rub the tack cloth over it remains to be seen anyway after the this uh, third coat now when it dries we'll uh, we'll see how it uh, how it looks then hopefully it will actually be a, a lot uh, a lot smoother so uh, let's get stuck in starting with a new roller head for this third coat anyway i suppose it uh, makes good sense to swap it out the other one was starting to look a little bit in the scabby side of things but this one will uh, make a difference so let's start as we mean to go on Well, there's 
coat number three done there now and definitely big improvements all around. Still a few little areas that are kind of showing through, sort of areas where there was filler or that. Uh, but the next step is actually going to be to give another coat of paint without flattening it back. So that'll give a nice kind of uh, extra layer and a good bit of coverage. So that will be, uh, I'll be doing that tomorrow. And yeah, uh, in the background as well, by the way, I'm also painting the trim and the front bumper and stuff like that as well. But the process is exactly the same, so I'm just saving you the detail on that. But uh, yeah, and also as well, just kind of cutting in the insides of the wings, just, just enough so that you can't see the kind of the silver panel line. I'm not painting the inside of the, the bonnet. Anybody, uh, Anybody more than a passing observer is going to know that this car was once silver, but you know, look, it was a grubby silver before, so yeah. In, in fairness though, I have to say, this coat of paint is really, really starting to kind of flat out nicely there of its own accord. It's, it, it's so much, uh, it, like the, the orange peel has got much less, uh, much less of a texture to it, if you know what I mean. And it's, uh, it just, it's, it's looking a lot smoother. Now obviously it's still wet, so I mean, we have to wait until it dries before we see how that's looking. But uh, yeah, um, I'll, uh, I'll get the next coat, next coat onto it and uh, we'll see. So it's going to be a total of five coats actually, in fact. But uh, yeah, we'll just keep going until we get it right. Okay, folks, so we're at the point now where we're preparing the car for the final coat of paint. So what I've actually done now is I've wet sanded this car at 600 grit and uh, just basically uh, gotten, uh, gotten most of the kind of orange peel off. But... Uh, what I did do afterwards as well is I, I, I'm kind of at the point of experimenting because this isn't the final coat of paint. It's the second last and I want to just try a couple of uh, techniques before I kind of um, mess up the final coat, so to speak. And one of the things I did was just in if some of the rougher areas um, that just didn't turn out the way I'd hoped. What I actually did was I dry sanded those small areas with uh, 400 grit just to kind of take the roughness out of it and then went back over it with the 600 grit. Uh, the wet uh, the wet sanding so uh, it did seem to work actually in fact um but yeah the other thing as well is i'm trying a couple of techniques with uh, compounds now as well so uh, i'll just show you the the result i have here far, far from finished it was actually just a very quick job but you'll see now uh, where we're at so you'll see here this is where i have wet sanded on the bonnet and if you go over here I've compounded this area here. Now it is uh, it is fairly smooth. There is a slight bit of orange peel. Now what I'm thinking is I'm going to try on the last coat to use that hairdryer technique again to try and pop the bubbles as I go because I think some of this um kind of uh, some of this orange peel effect is actually simply because of that. So yeah, it might be just uh, it might be just the best way of going about it. So we'll do that and um, see how we fare out. And look, worst case scenario, I've still got the half of it. I, I'm, I've only used a half a tin of paint now so far, so I still have plenty of paint left. Um, I I have compounded the the whole center section of the bonnet, but I kind of went over that twice. Uh, just this little area up here, it feels lovely and smooth. It really does. And to be honest with you, for a roller paint job, it's not the worst in the world. Well, what I will say, though, is, God, this takes a long time. I'll tell you what, <laughs> I won't be doing this again for a uh, for a car that I intend to be uh, selling. Because what I'll do is, if I actually buy a car that I intend to flip, I will not be buying a car that needs a heap ton of bodywork. Um, not that it's really needed it as such. I just think it, it, it was never, it, it never going to look as well as it could potentially drive. So, yeah, and then plus, this has been a bit of a learning experience for me. So anyway, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to get the um, 600 grit wet sanding finished. Uh, I still have to do the front bumper and the, the rear bumper and the lower uh, quarters on the car. Um, and I am going to then uh, wet sand it with 1000 grit and uh, just get it really smooth before the final coat, go uh, final coat goes on. And uh, yeah, at least we're kind of setting ourselves up for a win on that one. Oh, and by the way, I bought uh, Velcro polishing mops for the um, for the DA sander, actually, rather than having to go and buy a polishing uh, a polishing machine in, on top of the sander. It's actually working re working out fairly well, to be honest with you. Not that I have much of a basis of comparison, but uh, it seems to be all right. I just went over it again with uh, 1000 grit and rubbed it back there a bit and then compounded it and used the uh, Auto Gleam uh, paint paint. Paint restore, paint renovator. That's what it's called. Now look at that. That is not bad at all. Now, to be honest with you, the LED strip lights in here don't do it justice. But I tell you what, 
just going by feel, that is really, really good. So, uh, especially for something that was painted with a roller, folks, <laughs> it can't be, uh, it's hard to argue with now. But, uh, yeah, so um, obviously, as I said, it's not the last coat, so uh, we'll uh, we'll keep going. Okay, folks, it is time for the final coat of paint. The car has been sanded, it's been wiped down twice with uh, mineral spirits, and I've run the tack cloth over it. I did wipe it down twice because actually after the first one there was still quite a bit of uh, kind of dirt coming out of the paint and uh, impurities and stuff like that. Even after the second one there was a little bit so you know I mean it, it seems to be mu much better now. So you know we want to give this the, be the best chance we can to get a good finish. So we have the paint mixed up. It's a little bit thicker than it would be normally for the other coats and as I said the car is rubbed down. And uh, yeah, it's basically all, we, all we're to do now is to get stuck in. I would like to have the garage a little bit warmer than it is, but uh, the only way I'm going to get it any warmer than it is is to set fire to it. And it's kind of, I uh, don't think I want to go down that route for some reason. Now, just to let you know, by the way, I am going to try the trick with the, t the hairdryer this time around. I do think that actually it's going to give a smoother finish because when I was polishing this area just uh, that I was showing you uh, earlier in the video, it, uh, a lot of the kind of the ripples and stuff like that actually more seem to be like as if they were bubbles rather than kind of just normal orange peel from the roller so i'm gonna see anyway look we'll, we'll you know i have the hair dryer kind of jerry rigged so it's gonna stay cold it's a bandy hair dryer so it, <laughs> it's it not normally staying cold so anyway right uh yeah let's uh let's get stuck in it should go without saying that a new roller head is uh needed for this final step to be honest with you, it's no harm to change a roller head every time anyway. I mean, they're not exactly expensive things. You would think it's somewhat counterintuitive blowing air at something to prevent bubbles from getting into it, but apparently it works. Now, I'm not going to say there's no bubbles, but the bubbles that are in it are smaller. And I suppose time will tell how, uh, how well it actually evens out. But just looking at the bonnet there, it does seem to be kind of evening out into a much sort of more... Um, yeah, there's orange peel, but the, the, the ripples are smaller, if you know what I mean, which should make them a bit easier to uh, sand out time will tell i mean as i said this is the first time i've ever done this i really am taking my time though as i'm sure you've gathered and uh, making sure that i get really good coverage but i don't want to lay it on too thick as well it, well in so far as the paint is uh, thicker because i didn't thin it out as much but what i'm doing is uh, i'm making sure that i don't get any runs because runs are a right pain in the face to deal with so yeah we're, we're just gonna kind of put the paint on and then roll over it a couple of times with less paint on the roller and just kind of even it all out and get it uh, get it right. So if it takes me half a day to get this last coat on and get it on evenly and right, then it's time well spent because I don't want to have to put another coat on this. And I've already got, I've got a pain in my stones at this stage with it. Like, now, this is the fifth coat. Now, I would imagine if you're not changing the colour of the car and the car was originally red, you'd get away with maybe three coats. But I don't know. I suppose it depends on the state of the car as well. And possibly as well, the temperature has something to do with it. I don't know, I'm theorizing. Okay, final coat of paint is now on and done. So I am a very happy man. There's still a bit more to do. Well, there's still a lot more to do, to be honest with you. I have to polish it. I have to get all the trim sorted out. I have to get the shine into it. And I have to put it all back together again. And then we need to do something about the wheels as well. Now, you'll see there's a few bits and pieces like that of um, where this kind of red uh, splotches and stuff like that on it. That's actually literally just down to the, uh, uh, when I've been wet sanding it, it's the, the red water basically getting onto it and drying off. It wipes off, so it'll be fine. Uh, but uh, fundamentally, the car is uh, painted now, but 
what I would suggest you do is, if you are doing this, definitely use the hair dryer, uh, uh, especially on the last coat. I think, to be honest with you, it would have saved me an awful lot of hassle sanding it if I had used the hair dryer right the way through. As I said, learning experience, it does definitely flatten it out and kind of gives it a more even coat. Now, the only thing is, you can find yourself picking up bits of dirt and debris and stuff like that flying around and it ends up going into the paint and it did happen to me a couple of times. Being that you're rolling, uh, rolling the car, it's very easy just flick it out with your finger and just roll over it again and it's fine, you know, but it's, a, it's just something to be aware of anyway. But what we're going to do is we're going to leave it there for this video and in part three, we're going to get the, get the car polished and get the trim restored and then start looking at uh, getting it put back together again. So I hope you'll join me then and please do hit the subscribe button before you go. Comment down below if you have any observations or uh, thoughts or anything like that. I'm sure a lot of people have opinions on this uh, on this job so by all means share them you know i'm only <laughs> i'm only too happy to listen i always read the comments even if i don't reply and uh, yeah if you like what you see hit the like button share it with your friends and uh, yeah if you do decide to do it yourself let me know and uh, i'd love to i'd love to see the end result as well thanks very much for watching and as i said join me in part three and i'll talk to you then